Mum. Oh, have a nice time at the Astronomy Club, darling. This Astronomy Club every Sunday afternoon. Should we be worrying about Annie's eyesight? She's doing well at school. I think it's good she's got a hobby. Especially a nice, quiet, gentle one. This is extraordinary, Stephen. Like Genghis Khan has changed sex and become a DJ. It's just DJ shtick, Boz. Like, so you're not a little eccentric when you're on air. I'm the same both on and off the air. Sweet, shy little Annie, a thrash metal DJ. Who would have thought it? Come on, Kathy. It's just a different aspect of her personality. Annie, come on, back it in your face, my baby. I've got the new release here from that pompous switch metal band, Chainmail. I'd play it for you, but it's the usual leather trousered rubbish. Let's trash it! All right. So it's a slightly dangerous aspect of her personality. There were all these aftershaves lined up as samples. So you so tried the lot, yeah. That's why you whiff like something out of a safari park. Listen, if even one of these is the type of smell Kyla likes, and I've got an advantage, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, you know how dogs read messages and smells. There are dingoes in the Australian outback right now going, ooh, that's a bit rude. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, what do you think you did? What is this? Why are you doing this? Tony, what's going on? Well done, lads. They're clean. Bring them to my office. I know what you're up to. I just want to know how you've been getting away with it. Getting away with what? What's up, Tony? Your golden boys have blown it, Cathy. They've reverted to being the criminal types that got them arrested in the first place, bound to happen. What are you going on about? Last Friday, I was preparing my show. I went to the record library to get the singles I wanted. Gone. All of them. Kenny Rogers, gone. Cliff Richard, gone. Engelbert Humperdinck, gone. Sounds like someone's got good taste. I asked around the DJs, the adult DJs, and they've all been unable to find various records they wanted to play. Tony, records get lost, misfiled, left in corners. We're missing over a hundred discs. Oh. I see. You lot are in and out of here all the time, preparing your shows, hanging about. And amongst the bunch of you, who's got the criminal record? Who's already been in trouble with the law? So you think we stole the records? I know you have. Why didn't Tony report to the board of directors? He would have, but he doesn't have any hard evidence. Well, he couldn't have. We didn't do it. I believe you. I've had enough of that. He's insulting Jack so much by saying this. Don't worry about me. Me, I could understand. I might do something like this. Not that I did. But Jack's... Jack's promised his mum he'd never break the law again. So, why is Tony having people searched when they come in the building? If the records are going missing, wouldn't it make sense only to search them on the way out? He thought maybe you were borrowing the records to play at home. That is so insulting. I'd never play Kenny Rogers anywhere. So, how do we convince Tony that we're innocent? You mean before he sacks you, reports you to the police, and has you thrown in jail for breaking your probation? And so no pressure. There's only one way I can think of. Find out what's happening to those missing records. I don't believe it. They put security guards on the door. They're actually searching people. It's scary. What are they looking for? Search me. Which is what I shouldn't have said to the security guard. He patted down the sides of my leg. In the outer studio and read or watch the older DJs. But you prefer somewhere of your own to go. Right? That's the plan. We're going to do this room up after school this week. If more young DJs are going to come in, then they'll need a place to call their own. The room the older DJs use smells of cigars and hairspray. Did your mum say it was all right to do this? Yeah, she loved the idea. So more brownie points for me. Were you in the brownies too? No, I was an L6er. I got awarded the swimming badge, the camping badge, and the deception badge. I didn't know there was a deception badge. There isn't. That's why they threw me out. 
Annie. Annie, it's up the other end. Sorry. Annie, do I make you nervous? You're a bit intimidating. I'm intimidating. I heard your show on Sunday. That's just the character I play. I got awarded the acting badge, too. Over 12,000 records and CDs arranged alphabetically. Our lot don't even use much of this rubbish. We mostly bring our own. All those record bags going in and out. If I put my Darth Vader hat on. Hey, have you got one too? I mean, if I think like a mean-spirited villain. Uh, I knew you meant that. I can see why Tony would suspect us. This is the big question, Jax. The suit placed in front of us by the clumsy waiter named Fate. Why would one of us be stealing the sort of tosh that's gone missing? No idea. This is serious. What would you call a complete lack of the Smurfs? Paradise? Excuse me, Kyla. Sorry to trouble you, but um, may I ask you a personal question? The way you talk makes me feel like I'm in a Jane Austen novel. Go ahead. <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? Of course. It's Jack. Jack? He doesn't know it yet. He's struggling against my power. But it's only a matter of time. Just get hold of some tranquilizer darts. Excuse me. Sorry. I mean, hey, I thought James wanted to go out with you. Unfortunately. Well, James is nice. And if Jax isn't interested... Uh, James is not nice. He sexually harassed me. Let me demonstrate the way I see this. That is a scale of male gorgeousness. Now, on that scale, Jax would be that. And James would be... It's all rather subjective, though, isn't it? For some boys, we need to go through the floor. Oh, dear. You've gone and started. Hi, Buzz. Grab a brush and help. I'd never do such a thing. The rubbish here is so lovely. The placing of it so artistic. Harmonious cacophony. Like music for the eyes. Translation, please. You're spoiling it. Spare it as a monument to human folly. The only monument to human folly we need around here is James. Sorry, boss. Okay, so this is sound activated, right? After I switch this on... My mum thinks I'm at your house. What about yours? It's fine. I'll take the first watch, you take the second, okay? Oh, okay. Nothing's gone missing. Finally, the perfect trap. The bait. Richard Claderman's greatest hits. This thief is the sicko we think he is. He'll never be able to resist. I've contacted the council and asked them to look into whether this room is a historical monument. What's up, Buzz? <laughs> look! In the 70s, this was a canteen where such DJ luminaries as Roy Harcourt and Dave Braxton had their lunch. The remnants of which are still over in that corner. They're changing it. We're making it into a nice place to be. Boz has flipped, Stephen. He's wandered into the enchanted forest and can't find his way out again. Do you guys know why James and Jax are selling traps in the record library? Traps in the record? going in and out. They put traps in the record library. Obvious traps. I get it.
Kyla, as always, is not cooperating. I'll dispose of these. Uh, no, mate. I'll dispose of them. Okay. Do you want the waves or the blowing kisses? Yes. There's only Kumar of here. Uh, she's my daughter. Uh, why? Who, who are you? We're chainmail. She dissed us on the air. She in? No. We'll wait. <laughs> Care for a cup of tea? You did this all in one week? Cosmic. Good. Now will you let me on the radio? No. But I love how you're trying to impress me. Oh, great show today, Annie. What's up, girlfriend? I'm sorry that I miss your show. I uh, kicked some major... Um, I mean, I really rather enjoyed it. Why is Boz here? The protest continues. Your mum still won't let you on radio, I suppose. No. All I want in life is my own current affairs talk show. Is that so much to ask? Well, with people suffering all over the world. Oh, they can get their own talk shows. Now I have no alternative but to get serious with Mummy Dearest. How? Sulking? Emotional blackmail? Real blackmail, threatening to leave home and go and live with Dad, whatever it takes. There must be some way to impress her. Well, I could catch whoever's been stealing those records from the library. So how do people get their taste anyway? Do we hear the Beatles through the wall of our mother's womb and get imprinted? Is punk genetic? Let me get the phone while you dance around your bedroom. I know you do. I'll tell you if it's anybody interesting. Hello? Hello? Is that the Astronomy Club? Uh, yeah. Astronomy Club here. Watch that telescope, pal. Who's calling, please? Oh, um, it's Mrs. Kumar here, Annie's mother. I was wondering if my daughter could come to the telephone. Uh, she's working on something extremely delicate at the moment. Can I take a message? Oh, um, well, you see... Oh, it is rather urgent. Tony doesn't understand it, and I don't understand it either. Even with all the searches and the traps we've laid, the records are still disappearing. Well, maybe you should hide in the record library again tonight. With that latest mixture of aftershaves, the people probably pass out from the fumes. I'm trying to develop the perfect blend. Well, that isn't it. I have to talk to Kyla. I have to sort out a misunderstanding we had. And I guess you want me to stay here, because if I go near her, she's going to ask me out again, and I'm going to say yes. Yes? Yes. Go. Knock her out. Smelling like that, you probably will. Oh, you. I was hoping it was the fumigator. I wanted to talk to you about the other day. We got off on the wrong foot. That's the only way we are going to get off. You said you wouldn't help me get an audition unless I went out with you. That's not what I said. Is that what you meant by sexual harassment? No, I was trying to be charming. Charming? You, a worthless, hormone-driven, selfish, insensitive mutant reptile in the shape of a so-called man. He doesn't smell that bad. Hey, guys. You were meant to be on air. I know, I'm playing a long record. We have a problem. Or rather, Annie does. What kind of problem? Your mom called. She found out this isn't the astronomy club. They should be so lucky. You know a band called Chainmail? Those idiots. What about them? They're in your living room. The band that wants through everything but the TV out of the hotel room. They can't be. I'm sure I got it right. We've got to get straight on the phone. And call the police. No. ITN. If we're quick, we can get this on the evening news. 
Kyla, you have depths where most people have bottoms. Uh, Stephen, please don't talk about her bottom. What's wrong with my bottom? Nothing. That's what torments me. You're making comments about my bottom. Stephen started it. Let me tell you what I think about your bottom. The only good thing about your bottom is that seeing it means you're leaving the room. Stop it. Annie has a serious problem, and we need to sort it out without any bad publicity for the station. This is exactly what Tony's been waiting for. That track's going to be ending soon. I'm at fair in 15 minutes. I'll be back. Kyla, I'm going to free you now, and you and James are going to help, OK? And stop kissing my hand. Our Annie is a lovely girl. She can't possibly be this DJ person. You're the only Kumar in the neighbourhood. We'd have gone to the radio station, but radio stations don't like us. Not since Rudy had his experience with solid sound. His experience? His chainsaw frenzy experience. Building still creaks in a high wind, eh, Rudy? Oh, goodness. Mum and Dad mustn't find out about what I do here. We can't let Chainmail tell them. Your parents don't know that you're a DJ? No. You see, I'm really good at school and they think I'm going to be an astrophysicist. What? Like we need another astrophysicist? What are you going to do after you've left college? Open a little astrophysics site on the internet? James, Annie could end up being a great scientist. She's a great DJ already. Wasting that talent would be a crime. Who says you can only have one talent? Doesn't anybody care about what could be happening to my mum and dad? <laughs> We should just go in there in force and stare them down. Jackson and I are only ten minutes. We can't leave the building. Leave the building? I just said we can't do that. I know that look from my Nancy Drew books. He's having an epiphany. He wouldn't. I'm sure it's just my aftershave. He's experiencing a moment of pure revelation. Of course he is. You're touching him. Tony hasn't been able to work out how the records are leaving the building. So... If the records aren't leaving, that means... They're still here. And I think I know where. Look here. I want you to leave right now. Or... Or uh, we will call the police. You do that. By the time they get here, we'll have trashed the place. We get a big celebrity arrest, and the lawyer gets us off with a big fine. We couldn't buy that sort of publicity. Well, sit down! <laughs> so, Bods, are you hatching an egg? I'm sitting here in protest at your vandalism to this room. You know eccentrical Bods, he does what he likes. Now. Hey, hey, unhand me! What do you think you're doing? Got it. Whoa, what a great feeling. Kyla Kane, girl detective. Even the name sounds right. You were melting the records into an enormous ball of vinyl. You are actually mad, aren't you? Call it art. Tony calls it criminal. It's a good deal more artistic than those records were. They were actually playing them on the radio, you know. Would I destroy them again? Yes. Yes, I would. Such records have to be wiped out by whatever means necessary. Buzz. You were destroying other people's records just because you didn't like them? That's like burning books just because you don't think people should read them. You stamped on that chainmail record the other day. <sighs> that was mine to stamp on. And if other people want to listen to rubbish like chainmail or rubbish like this, they have the right to. You really are a very moral person, Annie. I'm not sure we can be friends. I'm afraid I just got carried away. You nearly got us arrested. Are we going to shop him to Tony? He wasn't seeing the records to sell or anything, just cleansing the airwaves. And he is our mate. So, we'll figure something out. You've earned my eternal gratitude. But I don't earn any brownie points with Mum. Oh, sorry. I enjoyed the detective bit, though. Was it good for you? Yeah. 
This final sphere is the hard evidence that Tony needs to pin the blame on somebody. We've got to get it out of here and quickly. And how on earth do you expect to do that? How on earth? Absolutely. Goodness, I think I've had an epiphany too. About time, lads. No, see here. Shut up. Mummy, Mummy, you'll never guess. Mummy, who are these rough-looking boys and why are they dressed like that? With chainmail, as if you didn't know. Please, Mummy, they're scaring me. Oh, come on. Do you think we're buying this? Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Kumar. Rudyard Boswell here. Any thought you'd like to see our model of the planet Jupiter? Stephen Price here. How do you do? Annie was making an absolutely riveting and fabulously fascinating point at the Astronomy Club this afternoon about the peculiarities of Jupiter's atmosphere. Hellfire, we've got the wrong house. Yes, that is what I've been trying to tell you. My daughter is obviously not the woman you are looking for. Now, will you please all leave immediately? Th these things happen. Sorry. Uh, good job we didn't trash the place. For your trouble and uh, for not telling the press about it. Ow! My poor, poor darling, those horrible, horrible boys. Let me go and get you and your little friend something to drink, huh? I don't want anything to do with his filthy money. Here, give it to your astronomy club. Especially since they're making stunning stuff like this. Uh, may I? Please. So, what was that point I made about the atmosphere of Jupiter? It's ancient. Nasty. And very thick. <laughs> Is there really a place on Jupiter named after... Herb Albert and his Tijuana Brass? Kenny Rogers, here. Cliff Richard, here. Engelbert Humperdinck, here. They'd all been misfiled. We just did a thorough search of the record library and found them all. So what do you say, Mr. Horton? I say... Fine, then. You two can keep on working here, at least until the end of the trial period. No, I mean, what do you say when you falsely accuse somebody of doing something and then you find out that you were wrong? Now, James. He didn't even have the decency to apologize. Oh, he's been cleared. Isn't that enough? No. Oh, James. Something died in here. My heart just stopped, if that counts. Please don't tell anyone I did that. I'm supposed to be hard. I'm quite soft, actually. James, if you're really serious about wanting to go out with Kyla, let me give you some advice. Great. What? Get a better aftershave. I wonder if Kyla feels all like that. In my dream, she didn't squeeze that hard. When did you start dreaming about Kyla? After buying all those records and that disguise you insisted on so you could buy them without any embarrassment, the money from Chainmail is down to £5.60. So what do you want to do with it? Something to make everybody happy. Go to a garage and get yourself hosed down. So that's what happened to the other Annie Kumar. Glad she told me about it. I'd like to send this message out to Chainmail. Pick on somebody your own size. But then there's probably nobody out there that small and that stupid. And while you're at it, make a decent record. Uh, never mind why I ask for the impossible. Make no mistake, my babies. This is the real Annie Kumar. <laughs> Whoever that is.